Let us pray. God, a loving Father, we bless you, we worship you, we adore you, we love you. Thank you, loving Father, for all your tender mercies, your love, your faithfulness, and above all for revealing your love to us in Christ Jesus, your beloved Son. Jesus, we thank you that you are the reflection of the Father. You are the very person of the Father. We bless you that you have come to give us life eternal. We thank you for the work of God, the Holy Spirit in us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming and dwelling in us and for making us a part of the heavenly family. Thank you for your divine promises. Thank you for your divine nature. And thank you, Father, for your living word, which is alive, active in us. Teach us, reveal to us, bless us, heal us, deliver us, and give us the grace to see, to understand, and to walk by faith as more than conquerors and overcomers in and through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. For your name, for your glory, for your honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's open our Bibles this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and we read from verse 9, 2 Corinthians 7, 9. It says, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. Your sorrow led to repentance. True repentance is not only about feeling sorry. True repentance is acknowledging, confessing, asking forgiveness, turning away from sin, and restoration is the key. That you are restored to what God wants you to be. That there is a turning. There is a turning, there is a tearing of heart and there is a newness of life filled with divine promises, with divine nature and with the grace and love and strength and power of God given to us. That now we walk in newness and we are overcomers, conquerors because of what God does in us otherwise repentance which is worldly is you'll feel sorry you'll feel guilty you'll feel ashamed yeah and you will be sorrowful for a little while but then we will go back to the old ways but not so with godly repentance not so with godly repentance why please see what he says that your sorrow led to repentance for you were made sorry in a godly manner. Amen? In a godly manner. Listen. That you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Hallelujah. Leading to salvation. So the repentance which is given as a gift by God in Christ Jesus by the power and the working of God, the Holy Spirit, leads us into salvation. That we enjoy fullness of life. That we enjoy the power, the work, and we see God at work in us. Where we have turned around. See? Our minds have turned. Our hearts are renewed. And our spirit is led into fearing, worshipping, loving the living God. Repentance. Amen? Repentance. And that is the repentance which is the true repentance of the Bible. That is the reason you will see the Bible says in Psalm 51 verse 3 where David is saying, For I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is always before me. And now please see the fourth verse. Against you. Psalm 51 verse 4. Against you. You only have I sinned. Can you see? 
I have sinned against you. God, I have offended you. Why? Why is there that, uh, that, why is there that uh, love in him? For God, see, I have offended you. The one who loves me, the one who is merciful towards me, the one who is graceful to me, the one who has been so faithful to me. Amen? I have offended you, God. What you have to understand is, sin affects everybody. Everybody around us. But more than anything, sin offends God. Because there is a relationship crisis there. See? You are called to love God with all your heart. And when we sin, we are actually torn. We are actually separated away from God in a way that we cannot reach God. So that's why you will see David saying, I have sinned against you. Against you because I love you God and I don't want to offend you. I don't want to do anything that is unacceptable to you. I need to turn back. And that's why that cry of repentance. I need to turn back. And that's why he says in that psalm, Give me back the joy of salvation. Can you see? Restore unto me a heart that enjoys you. So just see. What do we see? Repentance is a restoration, a turning back, a coming back to enjoy Coming back to the place of relationship once again with God. Amen. That's why you see, you know, in Luke 15, what do you see? The prodigal son has gone out. He's saying, I want my money. I want to go and live my life. I will do what I want. I want to enjoy. I, 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 I. The father says, you have the choice. And he goes out. And he squanders all the money. And all friends leave. And ultimately, he is there with pigs. And there is even no food there for him. And there he comes back to his senses. See? Comes back to his senses. In my father's house. Can you see? There is a relationship. I know. I need to turn back from where I am. And I need to go back to where I am actually supposed to be. Amen? In my relationship with God. That's why even in the book of Revelation, what does he say? See from where you have fallen. See? From where you have fallen. Why? Because see where you are supposed to be and see where you are. Got me? See where you are supposed to be. See what you were created for. Repentance is the awareness and becoming, you know, aware of the fact that I am not living the fullest life that I was called to in my relationship with God as a believer. I need to turn back. I need to come back. I need to go back to God. In my mind, in my heart. So there is a tearing of the heart. See? Render your heart. That is exactly, come with me, you will see in Joel. In Joel chapter 2. What does the Lord say in verse 12? Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. See? The heart is the key. With fasting, with weeping and with mourning. So render your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And He relents from doing harm. See, who knows? He will bless you. Amen. Can you see? So render your heart. Not your garment. It's not the external things. It's the inside. I have sinned against you. I have offended you. I have gone far away from you. I have wavered away from you. I need to come back to you. Amen? And enjoy. Enjoy. 
you god in my life amen that's the reason if you see what does david say in psalm 51 verse 10 create in me a clean heart o god and renew a steadfast spirit within me and the the latter part of verse 11 and do not take your holy spirit from me what does that mean not that the holy spirit is gone but you you, you know you, you you cannot really enjoy the relationship with god because of sin because the bible says in the new testament come with me in ephesians you will see in ephesians chapter 4 Listen carefully verse 26 be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil let him who steal steal no longer and then he further goes on to say in verse 29 Paul says let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption can you see don't grieve the holy spirit don't hurt the holy spirit don't offend god the holy spirit and that's exactly what david says against you i have sinned i have offended you we offend god the holy spirit who dwells in us because of our sinful ways we offend when we are bitter when we are angry when we are you know sulking when we uh, slander when we gossip when we when we abuse when we are lustful when we are greedy when we are avaricious when we are wanting the ways of the world see there's the lust of the eye lust of the flesh pride of life there is uh, pride so all these things offend it offends god but then you will say how am i supposed to be perfect no that's not what i'm saying it's not about perfection it's about your love towards god and asking him to search you that's why the prayer no search me oh god search my heart try me and what does he say come with me psalm 139 please see verse verse 23 search me oh god and know my heart try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me can you see see god if there is any wicked way in me see if there is anything in me that offends you see if there is anything in me that needs to go away help me help me o holy spirit of god cleanse me o holy spirit of god build me o holy spirit of god strengthen me o holy spirit of god for god has not given us a spirit of fear but power love and self control power love and a sound mind power love and overcoming power see oh, oh, an ability for god has given us so you cannot remain in sin and continue in sin and then walk with god for we offend god the holy spirit when we sin we need to repent we need to ask him search me try me help me to see my sinfulness help me and show me the things that offend you oh god you remember joseph potiphar's wife held him and said come nobody is there to see he said no 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 my master has been so faithful and good to me how can i do things against him like this i don't want to do anything that offends god and him see i don't want to do anything that offends and sin against god why because i know i know who i am i know who has called me i know what he is doing in me and i know that i walk with him every day amen can you see If you see come with me in Genesis chapter 39 verse 9 there is no one greater in this house Joseph says okay then I nor as he that is his master kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife how then can I do this great wickedness and please listen and sin against God 
See, sin against God. It's a matter of relationship. How can I sin against God? Because I walk with God. He ministers to me. He speaks to me. He, he loves me. He cares for me. He meets my needs. And He is my God, my Savior. Amen? And He is my Lord. He is my love. How can I offend Him? Can you see? That's exactly what David said. I have offended you. And that's exactly what Joseph says. I don't want to sin because I don't want to offend God. So when we sin, we offend God. That's exactly what Paul says. When you sin, you grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And there, there is a separation. There is, there is a void. Our God is a holy God. See? That awareness. God is holy. God is righteous. God is truly to be revered, feared, loved and obeyed. Amen? God is to be done that too. We have to walk with the holy God. If you see Jesus, he was a man filled with love, compassion. But what does he say to the woman who is caught in the act of adultery? All are going to stone. First he deals with the people around. He says, if any one of you has not sinned, throw a stone. But what does he tell her afterwards alone? See, there is no condemnation. There is no shaming her. There is no putting her down. Lovingly he tells her, go, sin no more. Amen. There you are. See? Godly repentance that God gives as a gift to us is that we turn away from sin but we are not fully, see, repentance is not only turning away from sin, but coming to the place where you enjoy God. Amen? Restoration. There is a restoration. Yes, I am forgiven. Now I am filled with love. That's why, no? The book of Revelation, what we saw. Why? You have fallen from your first love. See? Repent. It's being restored back to love. It's being restored back in the relationship. It's enjoying God once again. Amen? And that is a gift of God. True repentance is a gift of God given to a believer. Amen? It's a gift of God given to a believer. What is worldly repentance? Like Saul. Like Saul in the Old Testament. I'm sorry. I didn't kill the Am Amicalite king. Why? Because, uh, because I was afraid of the people. And, and you know, I'm sorry, I didn't wait for you in, uh, to uh, come for worship, he tells Samuel. And, the, and Samuel's cloak tears, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But he doesn't show the fruit of repentance in his life. He doesn't show love towards God. He only keeps saying sorry, sorry. And when David comes into his life, in fact, he becomes jealous of David. He becomes angry of David. He wants to kill David. And he goes all out to destroy David. There you are. Can you see? I am sorry, but where is the fruit? I am sorry, but are you enjoying God? See? I am sorry for my sin. I feel ashamed. I feel condemned. I feel guilty. But I am not truly coming to a place of understanding that I am a son and a daughter of God and that I need to enjoy God. Amen? I need to love God. I need to fear God. I need to obey God and I need to come to a place where I turn back and my relationship is restored back with God. Godly repentance that is filled with salvation. Amen? Saving grace of God. Otherwise it becomes a worldly repentance. See, by just saying I'm sorry. Being sorry is not the point. But being restored back. The, the young man came back home. His father restored him back. See? Embraced him, kissed him, put on the garment, put on the ring, put on the shoes, cut the fatted calf, told the servants, come on, my son has come back. Amen? See? And the son is now going to enjoy the father's love, father's forgiveness, father's mercy, and the son is going to live back in the father's house. Amen? Repentance. That is repentance that leads to fullness and salvation of God. And there is a fear of God, see, on your soul and my soul. And we love to be there. 
we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ when we confess our sin and God is faithful and God is righteous. Amen? So we have to come to that place of restoration where we enjoy that victorious life, where we enjoy that abundant life, where we enjoy that fullness of life that Jesus offers us in the New Testament. Hallelujah! So repentance should lead to restoration. Amen? If you see, come with me. In 2 Kings chapter 18, you will see there is Hezekiah from verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, became, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king. Okay, and then we come to verse 3. Listen to this. And he did what was right in the sight of God according to all that his father David had done. And what was the right? He removed the high places, broke down the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden images and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the children of Israel burnt incense to it. Can you see? Doing the right things. Now listen. He trusted, verse 5, in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was no none like him among all the king of Judah, nor who were before him. For he held fast to the Lord, he did not depart from following him, but kept his commandment, which the Lord had commanded Moses. Verse 7, the Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went. Hallelujah. The Lord was with him. Now that is repentance. Repentance is when you know there is sin here. He did something about it. He removed everything. And he restored worship back to God. He restored trust back to God. He restored relationship back to God. Amen? That is, that is repentance. And once that restoration is complete, then you see the presence of God, you see the peace of God, you see the power of God, you see the promises of God in your life and my life. And you prosper. Amen? Because you have come to fear the Lord God Almighty. Amen? And that is exactly, even in the New Testament, what do you see? Peter, I have prayed for you that you don't fall. No Lord, I promise you, I will never sin against you. I will even die for you. It's okay. But I know tonight you're going to betray me. And Peter betrayed him. But what happened? Peter, after knowing he sinned, came back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Coming back to Jesus. See? Acknowledging his sin. He is miserable. And now when he sees Jesus at the, uh, at the shore, Jesus says, come friends, eat something. And Jesus puts a question to him, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know that I love you. That's it, see? Repentance always brings you to restoration and to the place of love with God so that you enjoy your relationship again with God in Christ Jesus in the New Testament. Hallelujah. See? Come back to that first love. Come with me. You will see in John. John. Chapter 21. Please see. We'll read from 17. He said to him the third time. Jesus is talking to him. Peter. Simon son of Jonah. Do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time. Do you love me? And he said to him. Lord you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. That's it. And then the Lord goes on to say, yeah, from now onwards you will go where I am telling you to go. Come, follow me. Amen. Say. So always remember, repentance in the Bible is restoration and coming back to the place of love and getting back the understanding of God's call and now walking with God. Amen. That is repentance. And that is godly repentance. There is reverence for God. There is fear of the Lord. 
and there is wanting to follow him faithfully. Amen. Come with me. You will see in Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and I know that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and I found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, just see, verse 4, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Repent. You have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Can you see? Let the works that you do be led by love. Amen? Not out of compulsion, not that you have to do it, but because you love the Lord your God, you want to do it. Amen? And that is exactly what Joseph said. I don't want to offend God. That is exactly what David said. I have offended you only. That is exactly what Paul says. Don't offend the Holy Spirit of God. Walk in love. In fact, the fifth chapter says that. Yeah, you are children of God. Ephesians 5, 1. You are children of God. So walk in love. See, walk in love. In that sense that you are aware of God's love. You are a child of God. And you are called to be victorious. You are called to walk in fullness. You are called to walk in abundance. Because you are united with Christ Jesus. Amen. So repent. See from where you have fallen down. And come back to the first love. And let the works of God come through your life and my life. Amen. And that's the reason. Come with me. Revelation chapter 3. Please see Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. And white garments that you may have. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. See. God will refine. God will open our eyes. God will help us to see. God will cleanse us. Amen. Can you see there? I counsel you that you buy from me gold refined in the fire. That you may be rich. That you may have white garments. See. We are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we confess our sins. And the Bible says. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and therefore be zealous and repent. Amen. Be zealous and repent. Repent. Can you see? You are loved. I will chasten you. I will rebuke you. I will correct you. I will discipline you. But I want you to understand that you cannot offend me and get away with it. See? I will bring you to the place that I created you for. I will work my will and my purpose in and through your life. And you will walk with me. And you will fulfill my work. Amen. Repentance. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. And what is the goodness in all this? The love, the mercy, the forgiveness. And above all, God being so patient with us. God being so patient with us. In fact, the Bible says... Please see, 2 Peter chapter 3, listen, verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hallelujah! All should come to repentance. That's why in the 11th verse, what does it say to believers? Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person you ought to be in holy conduct and godliness. Looking for the coming of Jesus Christ and hastening that. See? You, sh you and I should be walking in holy conduct and godliness. And verse 14 says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in Jesus in peace, without spot and blameless. So what is there? Holy conduct, godliness, peace, spotless and blameless by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Repent. Repent. Repent and come back to Jesus. Amen.
God is wanting us to look to Jesus and to ask him to bless us and bring us to a place that he created us for, for his glory, for his name, for his will, for his word, for his purpose and for his works. Amen? Can you see? And that's the reason he says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and will dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. And I also, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. The Spirit is calling the church to godly repentance. The Spirit is calling the church to godly love. Loving the Father in and through Christ Jesus and doing the works of God in love. Amen? See? That is what the church is being called to. To walk in the Holy Spirit, to love through the Holy Spirit and to work through the Holy Spirit, the will of God the Father in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! So may we ask today, God to give us a godly repentance. That we are not walking in the fullness, we are not walking in victory, we are not walking in abundance, we are not walking in the promises of God and we are not fulfilling the will of God as he wants us to repent. Amen? Repent. Repent and ask for forgiveness. Repent and tell him to show all areas of sinfulness. Repent and turn and ask him to restore and bring you and me to the place where we enjoy God, we enjoy His love, we enjoy His word, and we enjoy His works through us. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, our loving Father, we bless and thank you for this time that you have given to us. Bless us, Father, with the grace to acknowledge our sins. Bless us, Father, with the grace to confess our sin. First and foremost, show us all areas where we are not living the life that you have called us to. Help us to ask for forgiveness. Help us to turn away from sin. And help us, Father, to come back to the place of restoration that you have called us to, Father. Bring us to the place of restoration. Bring us to the place where we realize what we were created for. Like when Jesus asked Peter, Do you really love me, Peter? then go do what I have called you for. Feed my lamb. Amen. God, give us the grace. Give us the understanding. As you said in the book of Revelation, see from where you have fallen and do the works once again. Come back to your first love. Father, bring us back to our first love in Christ Jesus. Work in us and through us. Your will, your word, your works, your glory, your honor, and your name be hallowed in Christ Jesus by the power and the work of God the Holy Spirit. Bless your church with godly repentance. Bless your people. Bless us. Bless me. Bless my family with godly repentance of God, which is your gift. Unless you open eyes, unless you turn our minds with your living word and with the power and work of God the Holy Spirit, no man can repent of God and be brought back to that love. Teach us to walk in godly fear. Teach us to walk in love. Teach us to walk in fullness of life in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Stay blessed. Amen.